In this video, we're going to be looking at statistics for describing, exploring, and comparing data. In other words, ways to measure the center of some data that we're given. Measures of center for a data set is a value at the center or the middle of the data set. And the four measures of center we're going to be looking at in this, in this video are the mean, median, mode, and mid-range. Depending on what kind of data you're looking at, one of these values might be more helpful than the others. So if you're looking at, say, data of collections of colors of M&Ms, or you're looking at data of scores on a midterm, one of these values might be better a better description of what's going on in the data than the other ones. Let's get started. So looking at mean first, the mean of a data set is often called the average of the data set. And the mean of the data set is found by adding the data values all together and then dividing by the number of data values. So if I'm looking at seven faculty members in my department and we're all describing our commute to school, the commute distance to school in miles. We have, let's say, 12 miles, 20 miles, 10, 13, 15, 18, and 17 miles. Then the mean of that data set will be found by adding all the values together and dividing by the seven total faculty members. In this case, we get 105 divided by 7. Now, depending on your homework problem, some homework problems will want you to write your answers as reduced fractions, and other homework problems will want you to write your answers as decimal values. In this case, it doesn't matter because 105 divided by 7 reduces to 15, so 15 is our average or our mean commute distance. The formula that you're going to see a lot for mean uses a Greek letter. Sorry about that. But the Greek letter sigma that you see here stands for the letter S in English or for sum. So what this sigma of X means is add each data value X together. So find the sum of all of the data values and then divide by the total number of data values. And the notation that we use for mean is x bar. So we put a straight line over the top of the x value. In later on the semester, we're going to be dealing with data values coming from entire populations. So maybe the whole population of faculty members at Sierra College and all of their commuting distances. Right now, we're just focusing on when data comes from a smaller sample of a larger population. We have to change our notation a little bit later on this semester when we're talking about data from an entire population. So right now, when we're talking about data that comes from just a small sample, we're using the X bar notation. Okay, let's do a quick example. So let's find the mean or the X bar of the following ages of children in a playgroup. So let's say we have a playgroup where their ages and years are given by 5, 3, 2, 6, 2, 4, and 8. To find the mean, we add up or find the sum of all of their ages, and it looks like there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 kids. So adding up their ages and dividing by 7, we get 30 divided by 7, or approximately 4.28. Five seven. <laughs> okay, let's talk about median. The median is also called the middle. The median of a data set is found by arranging all the values in order and choosing the middle value. So let's say you're looking at seven players on a basketball team and we're looking at their points scored in a particular basketball game. So I've got 12 points, 20 points, 10, 13, 15, 18, and 17 points. Now these data values aren't listed in order, so it's a little more challenging to find the median. So let's rearrange them. That's better. 10, 12, 13, 15, 17, 18, and 20. 
And the value in the middle here, when we arrange them in order, is 15. So we would call the median value 15. And the notation we use is a squiggle over the x, or what we call a tilde. OK. I have to do another example of median because not all uh, data sets have an odd number of data values, so they don't all have a middle. So if we're looking at the total points for a team, let's say in eight basketball games, they're already listed in order here, 27, 42, 43, 58, 83, 98, 103, and 109, but there's no one value in the middle. So to find the median, we take the two values in the middle, 58 and 83, and we find the mean of those two values. So add them together, divide by 2, and we'll get 70.5 for the median. OK, let's discuss mode. The mode is awesome. The mode is just the value that occurs the most frequently. So <laughs> if you're looking at the ages of my friends, uh, I'm middle-aged, no lying. So my friends and I, the, our ages are 53, 51, 53, 53, 53, <laughs> 49, I'm not 50 yet, and 51. The most common age here is 53, so that would be called the mode. Okay. Let's do a couple of quick examples of mode. Uh, let's say number of pennies in pockets of seven people. So if you look at this set of data values, I've got two, three, two, four, three, five, nine. Now, two values here occur twice, but no value occurs more than twice. So this would be considered bimodal. It has two modes, one of two and one of three. My next example popped up too quickly. Number of nickels in pockets of seven people. This is one, three, four, one, four, five, three. So this has, let's see, one appears twice, four appears twice, and three appears twice. But no value appears three times. So this would be trimodal. I'll write this in a second. And let's say the number of dimes in pockets of seven people are two, three, five, one, zero, six, four. Man, nothing appears more than once. So there would be no mode for the last one. So there would be two modes, two different modes, two and three for the first one, bimodal. The second one has, so the modes would be two and three. The second one is trimodal. The modes would be one, four, and three. But the last one doesn't have any number that appears two times or more, so it doesn't have a mode. There is no mode. Okay, finally, let's talk about mid-range. If you're looking at ages of people at a restaurant and you want to find the mid-range, you're going to add the maximum value plus the minimum value and divide by 2. So in this case, it would be 20 is the maximum value plus 10 is the youngest divided by 2. So the mid-range of this data set is 15. So for an example, let's suppose that we list M&Ms in a fun size pack. We say one is equal to red, two is green, three is yellow, four is brown, five is blue, six is orange. Which one measure, which measure of center gives a meaningful information in this situation? So here's the list of all the different colors of M&Ms, and we're just gonna assign numbers to the colors. So here are all the different colors we have. If we're finding the average of all of them, the color 3.5, so we add them all up and divide by the total number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, times 3 is 21. We have 3.5. That's somewhere between yellow and brown. That doesn't make any sense. So the mean would not make any sense here. The median is the middle. 
Well, we sort of arbitrarily assigned one to red and six to orange. So the median being brown doesn't make sense either, but the mode would make a lot of sense. We have trimodal data here. So we have a lot of ones, one, two, three, four ones, so four reds. We have four fives, one, two, three, four fives. And we also have four sixes, one, two, three, four sixes. So it's a trimodal. So we have the most reds, blues, and oranges, and fewer of the other colors. That data does make sense. Okay, finally, the rounding rule for the mean and the median where you could get some decimals. The rule of thumb that we use is use one more decimal place than is in the, oops, sorry, set of data. So let's say you're looking at money spent at a convenience store. So it looks like here I have two decimal places, right? Because it would be cents. I have two decimal places. So if I'm finding the mean, I add up all of the money, divide by the total number, which is seven. And the number I get is a really long decimal, 6.301. Since I have two decimal places given in the data set, I'm gonna round this to three decimal places, 6.301. Okay, pay a lot of attention to this last example. This tends to be where we get most of the questions on the homework. So let's say that we don't have exact data values, we just have a frequency distribution. Now remember, we talked about frequency distributions in the last video. So the formula that we use to find a mean, is gonna have to be a little bit different because we won't have the data values. So let's say that we have weight loss in pounds for a bunch of people that participated in a diet and exercise program. So what this means, remember, is three people lost zero to four pounds. Five people lost between five and nine pounds. Four people lost 10 to 14 pounds. One person lost between 15 and 19 pounds, but nobody lost 20 to 24 pounds. So we don't know exactly how many pounds each of these people lost, we just have a frequency distribution of them. This is just an estimate of the mean then because we don't know the data values. So here's how we're gonna, let me explain this formula to you. X is the class midpoint of each class. Remember that's the middle value. So the class midpoint for zero to four pounds would be two for minus four, zero plus four is four divided by two is two. And F is the frequency, so three. So to find this, we're gonna do three is the frequency times the midpoint of the first one, which is two. And then five is the frequency times the midpoint of, let's see, five plus nine is 14, divided by two is seven. And again, if you wanna review on how to find midpoints from frequency distributions, look at the previous videos. Uh, in the next one, we have a frequency of four, and the midpoint between 10 and 14 is 12. So four times 12. And then we have one frequency of one, the midpoint between 15 and 19 is 17. And then the last one, I'll list it because, uh, but it's silly to list because the frequency is zero times the midpoint between 20 and 24, which is 22 but that won't affect our data. And then add up all the frequencies. So we need how many people participated in this. So three plus five plus four plus one. Add up all those values, do that calculation, and we get 8.2. So we can still get a good estimate of the mean, even if we just have a frequency distribution.